you know, we aren't always told everything um, about the military and like benefits that they offer. Um, you know, I've met some other pregnant women. They don't even know that, you know, they can get this or they can get that. And um, some of our guidances have been updated. So I'll be going over some, you know, newer um, guidance and regulations. Um, just, you know, so to make your pregnant life easier. <laughs> Um, so stay tuned, keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm with Cosmetic Belt Brave here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get down to it. So, um... This video is going to be about being pregnant in the military. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about being pregnant, at least in the Air Force. I can't speak for other branches, but uh, for the Air Force, I can put you on sis. So, um, <laughs> I'm currently uh, seven months pregnant. I just hit my, my third trimester. There are a lot of things that I never knew, you know, that you could do or that the military provides for you so i'm just going to kind of share my experience of you know being pregnant so far in the military and i'll definitely like follow up um if you are familiar with some of my vlogs you've seen me go to like my doctor's appointments and my centering classes so um there's a lot of information out there um in the military and the military they really do take care of you um as far as what i've been experiencing i found out i was pregnant at seven weeks and so um so first i took a um a little clear blue test i only took one because um, my husband and i were he kind of knew i was pregnant <laughs> but i was just kind of like pushing it off just because i hadn't gotten my period yet so um so i took uh the clear blue test and that came back positive and then um Afterwards, I went to, so um, where I'm stationed is a pretty small base. So um, I already had a, um, a civilian, um, a civilian OBGYN. So I ended up making an appointment with them. And so I didn't tell the mili I didn't tell the military first. So I took, um, you know, just a drugstore pregnancy test. And then I went to my regular OBGYN. And then I took a pregnancy test there and it was positive. And then they, they found out that I was seven weeks, which I only thought I was like five weeks, but I was seven weeks. Um, after they confirmed, that's when I went to the, um, my primary care doctor. And, um, so, and, and they took a pregnancy test there as well. And we have a women's health, um, section. And um, so I went to women's health and they, um, I came back positive. Which I already knew because I already took two different pregnancy tests, and um, so from there they briefed me. They briefed me on everything um, that I needed to do, um, to, you know, to get started. Obviously, they in, I was coded in the military. Um, you're coded. Sorry, guys, I had to change up my um, scene scenery because my camera died. Didn't realize uh, I needed to charge it. But anyway, so. Um, after I went to the military and um, I went to my women's health, uh, well, I went to my primary care doctor and then I went to women's health, confirmed the pregnancy. And then, so there was a list of things that I had to do. They had to uh, test me, draw my blood for, you know, various reasons, obviously, and for the pregnancy test. And then I got uh, briefed by public health, um, just on uh, illnesses, diseases, etc was I or have I ever been exposed to anything um they talked to me about sickle cell I don't have sickle cell but um they talked to me about that um and then um I had to attend a briefing as well they scheduled me for a briefing called the bundles for babies or baby bundles or something like that and essentially so my husband and I went to that um just a number we went down a list of things that I had to do um so my husband and I um, went to that and essentially that's like briefing you like parenting one-on-one, you know, for like for first time parents. And um, so there, there was a, um, there was a dentist there 
that, you know, taught us about, um, you know, oral and dental hygiene for the mom and the baby. And we just learned so many really cool things about how baby can be born with teeth. Um, there was uh, somebody for who briefed us on, you know, financials. Um, there was uh, someone who briefed us on TRICARE and what to do after you have the baby, how you have to add the baby um, um, to, you know, your insurance and, you know, just all those little things that you have to do once the baby's born and once they get their social security. Now, the military gives you a breast pump, it's, um, a breastfeeding pump as well. That's a, um, your allotted one free um, breast pump. So you get that as well. Um, and then uh, from there, so I, I did like the number of things. Those were the most important things that I had to do. I had already scheduled my next appointment for my OB, which I think was like a month later. I think, I think it was when I was nine weeks is when I got like my first um, ultrasound. And um, that's when I got my first ultrasound. And, um, and that wasn't, um, that was at a civilian, um, practice because my base is so small. Um, I've just always gone to a civilian, um, OB. Nine, 10 weeks, I think I got my first ultrasound and I did not know it was a first time parent. I am a first time parent, by the way, but I did not know that they stingy you with the ultrasound. <laughs> like I thought you, like every visit was like, you get an ultrasound. No, honey, like you don't like. I guess it's expensive. I don't know why they hold out on you. Or maybe it's to prevent you from panicking or something, but whatever. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, and then I've been going to um, my appointments, like, once or twice a month, like, depending on depending on um, what I need to have done. And then um, later on, they take additional tests. Like, recently I got, um, you know, they test you for CDs. They test you for everything. Um I got tested for my, for my glucose, you know, test you to make sure your vitamin D and your iron levels are good. Um, the, you can also get genetic testing if you want. The military does not pay for genetic testing, by the way, and I found that, like, really shocking. Um, you know, to test for the trisomies, the Down syndromes, um, the, the military doesn't pay for that. It used to, but... Um, is something that changed so so with that being said um i didn't find out the um and i think it's like really expensive like for genetic testing so i found out when i was like four and a half five months pregnant what the gender was and i do have my gender reveal i have it my gender reveal uh video posted and i'm having a boy um i had to wait but you know you could pay for it but hell i was about to pay for it like when I was like what nine ten weeks and my husband stopped me he was like wait let's find out because at the time we didn't know exactly how much it cost so he was like wait let's just see how much it costs and um it was it was pretty expensive so we were just like oh we'll wait so that's something to point out um they only pay for the AFP and cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis and AFP so if um your baby you know is uh has any of those abnormalities then they will be able to detect it and they can go from there so I wasn't too worried about it um so I just kind of waited until I found out the gender um and that was what in like almost the second trimester so around like so around like let me see when I had five months I had to change my my sneaker I couldn't put my boots on anymore so I just started wearing regular tennis sneakers, tennis shoes, and I got that. Um, so I had to get a note from my OB and they had to send it in to my primary care doctor, which was on base. And um, literally in a day, they were like, you don't have to wear your boots anymore. Essentially a waiver, they just put it in the system, a waiver they put in the system so I don't have to wear, um, put on my boots. Cause girl, I was struggling, I was struggling trying to put my boots on. I'll be on the stairs like trying to, lift my feet so what else um another thing um so around like the four month I was really I wasn't really showing at like four or five months um, I was wearing my uniform like I wasn't showing but actually let me backpedal so like the first trimester um I was super nauseous like I thought I was having a girl I was extremely nauseous every I felt like a superhuman 
Like, every smell bothered me. Like, it was ridiculous. But for some reason, when I would get up in the morning, like, my job is from, like, 8 to 3.30, 8 to 4. So, I was good in the morning times. But when I got home, girl, I'd be nauseous and tired. And then around, like, 4th, for fifth month, second trimester, that's when it like my nausea kind of like stopped a little bit. And I would say this right now, I know you can really do about that nausea. Like they say, eat salt and crackers. They say take vitamin D. Uh, I think I took the it's like the sleep medicine. It's really popular. I can't think of the name right now. But if you um, ask your doctor, they'll suggest it. And I didn't like that because it made me drowsy. And like, even though it puts you to sleep, to sleep through the nausea, it's like, you feel really sluggish. So I stopped really taking that. And when I feel nauseous, I just turn on my side, take some vitamin D um, and eat some salt crackers, honestly, until I got out, got out of the first trimester. But um, second trimester, I wasn't showing too much. Um, and then eventually I had to switch out of uniform. So I'm very blessed, my coworker, she, literally just had a baby so she had leftover like she had her old maternity uniform so I actually actually gave it to me and I ended up you do receive a maternity allowance in the military um it's like almost four hundred dollars it's like 398 something like that almost four hundred dollars and um to purchase your maternity uniform and um so I ended up just pocketing it because my so if you you're smart Honestly, I mean, it depends if you don't mind wearing other people's clothes. I don't care. I just wash it, call it a day. I'm only going to be wearing it for a certain amount of time, like from five months to, what, nine months? So I'm just like, whatever. And it's really comfortable. So I just ended up pocketing my maternity allowance. So, um, and I'll actually show you what the maternity outfit So this is my maternity uniform, if you guys can see. So, excuse me, I don't have a bone. <laughs> But, um, so, um, my coworker let me have this uniform. Um, you can see this top is stretchy. This is looks in the back. This is a size large. I think it's like 14 to 16. I, I would usually probably wear a size medium, but girl, I don't care. <laughs> it's really comfortable. Um, and then the bottom looks like, you know, your regular uniform. And then the top, and this is the top. And... Um, it's just a lot more room, it's a lot more room, um, in the top, and it kind of, like, goes like this, <laughs> if you can see, I can't really tell, but, yeah, it's just a lot more room, um, so this is maternity uniform, um, super comfortable, you know, the only difference, I think, is just, like, the front, and, like, these pockets, right here but other than that um you know i think i don't know how much it, it costs like to actually purchase it but if they're giving you about four hundred dollars then i would think it's pretty pricey so um you guys just got to see um what my maternity looks like just like a little quick you know shot of it um so yeah, that's the maternity uniform, you know, just only, the only difference is it's just a little, the top is a little bigger and then the bottoms is just a little, um, you know, there's a stretchy part, you know, for maternity wear instead of the actual, you know, belt and button. Cause like after a while, like I had to stop wearing my belt, um, with my pants and I would have like two buttons open, <laughs> like just thugging it out. So, um. Yeah, so definitely, um, eventually, you're going to have to get the maternity uniform. Um, and let's hope you don't have to get the maternity blues, because, girl, those are not cute. <laughs> and, and it's like spending more money, you know, for uh, for a couple months. So I suggest thrifting, Airman's Attic, you know, go to the, uh, the thrift store on base or something like that. Uh, somebody got to have something somewhere if you want to be frugal. But if you don't mind purchasing, um those items more to you know more to you <laughs> but um i don't necessarily need to purchase my blue so i'm i'm okay the maternity uniform um so i i did get a waiver for my boots um my feet they didn't really swell up that much it was just really hard to put the boots on in general with a big belly in your way <laughs> so i definitely got um a waiver to wear my comfortable tennis shoes are coated 
81 so um, it's pretty much a profile so you can't be deployed you can't take your PT test um, you can't do certain things you know within your job if you're you know if you have a hands-on job so that's something um, that populates in the system excuse me once it's confirmed that you're pregnant and um, you know your unit your commander they're made aware um, each unit is different on their processes but that essentially um, what's going to be in your IMR profile so that's something good to know obviously you're coded 81 um, so you know they push your um, you know all of your say if you have a PT test or whatever you're coded until I believe so I found I was pregnant in November and they coded me all the way until August of 2023 so that's the time I'm coded. So with the code 81, so let me tell you this. So luckily I work in the CSS, so I get all of those notifications. And so I know who it goes to. So I didn't want people to know that I was pregnant. So, um, you know, when it came in to our front office, you know, I told, every, you know, I told everyone, I'm like, hey, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Uh, who who saw it just because you know maybe it's a little bit of my you know freaking out of you know think wondering bad things that could happen you know while pregnant but uh, I didn't tell anybody until I was like maybe 15 weeks and then I just only told people who, who were close to me at work but everybody else I didn't tell until I was like 16 months until they started until I started showing that's just me personally um, but I would suggest to, once you tell the military, it literally takes like 24 to 48 hours to, more like 24 hours to get into the system. So I would tell your CSS or whoever, um, gets product notifications, I would tell them that you don't want anyone to know. Um, and, and I've even had it being, I've had it happen to, uh, me where I told someone congratulations and we were kind of in a public setting and they didn't tell anybody else so you really have to be careful with that and you know you know definitely um let your leadership know or whoever before usually they they also um uh, pub, uh, public health usually calls your supervisor and tells them so you know just be aware of that they're supposed to they didn't call mine they just sent uh, notification so it depends on what base you're at you know how well they are with following up and calling people and I believe that's if you your supervisor is on their file or they can find it or whatever uh, they didn't call my supervisor but I know someone who said that they called her supervisor and told him so I personally think it's like HIPAA like this is like why would they call him you know but whatever um so yeah, definitely, if you don't want anybody to know, um, definitely get ahead. Um, or, you know, I'd rather you not wait so people can, you know, know to be, you know, treat you with care. Um, but, you know, uh, it's important for, you know, the military to kind of know. But if you can tr try to control who knows within, you know, your job, I definitely, you know, think that's important as well but it really depends you know if you're like oh I'm pregnant or whatever you don't care but me I cared just because I personally feel like people's energy can try to get to you and I, I definitely wanted to protect myself in that way um, and you know things happen in life you know so I just wanted to not let anyone know so definitely um, get ahead of that uh, whenever you let them know that, let, whenever you let the military know that you're pregnant, whenever that test comes back positive, like the day of, like, you know, just be like, hey, this is coming in. Don't send it to anybody um, because I didn't expect mine to come in so quick. It literally came the next day. Like, and I had to tell uh, my coworker, I'm like, hey, don't send that out to anybody. <laughs> Keep it between us until I'm ready. And he respected that. Maternity and paternity leave. So previously, um, I believe military members only would get like um, 
So it was different for mother and father. I think father's got six weeks and then mom's got, um, mother's got 12 weeks. Or I shouldn't say mother and father because there are many circumstances. So um, the person who births a child would get more time, which is 12 weeks. And then the person, the non, the person who did not birth the child would get half that six weeks. And, and then previously, like years ago, it used to be just six weeks only. And recently, um, I believe either the end of last year or early this year. Um, so the person who gives birth, they get 42, um, convalescent leave days, non-chargeable days, the day after you leave the hospital. So like, um, say if, see, I'm due May 25th and let's say like, oh, I got to go to the hospital, you know, um, that day or the day before, then my duty status will change to medical as if like I'm in the hospital. They don't, they still don't charge you to leave. So even before you don't leave the hospital or before you, you, um, like that week, if you plan on going to the hospital and then they just say like, so it's like, if you go to the hospital, they may send you back, you know, like you're technically on medical, like your duty status in um, milpids or in, you know, you should be under medical because you're in the hospital, you're hospitalized. So they don't charge you leave before and then your uh, consecutive, your, your convalescent leave will start the day after you leave the hospital. And it's the same for, um, so for the not the parent that's not birthing, their leave will start the day after you leave the hospital. And so for myself, um, so I'm going to take my, but the, um, the person who does not birth the, um, the child, they don't get the 42, um, consecutive leave days. So like, for instance, here's an example. So for my husband and I, so since we're both active duty, see, I will get the 42 days after I leave the hospital plus the 12 weeks and then I can add any additional any leave I have I can add it and that will be my entire leave so um, maternity leave so I'm trying to make mine up to six months so if I give birth in May I'll probably be back in October so for my husband he only gets so his leave day um, he only gets 12 weeks so his leave will start the day after we leave the hospital if that makes sense so and then so 12 weeks is what three months so like July August is when he would have to go back to work that's a new guidance on maternity and paternity leave so um, that's something um, interesting to know um, like I said I'm in my third trimester so I've only gotten this far um, some things that you know they do recommend is getting a lot of exercise um, I work in a three-story building and like I have to park really far so I definitely get my exercise in just doing a lot of like nesting um, also like so I was told that um, I, you can technically stop working at 28 weeks if you're depending on your job if it's um, you know kind of harsh on your body you can get a note to stop working at 28 weeks so just know you know, if you if you aren't feeling well and a lot of times your leadership will work with you. You know, I definitely know there are those jobs that are very much like, you know, difficult <laughs> and don't understand. Um, but a, a lot of um, career fields understand you being pregnant. Some don't, not gonna lie. But um, I've just been blessed enough. Um, and I am in the admin career field. So it's, you know. I, I work from home some days and I also sit at my desk. So also something that um, I learned, and I don't know if this is new, but um, so for my actual doctor who's going to be delivering my baby, I won't meet until like 30 weeks, 32 weeks until it gets really close. Um, I've been working with a midwife like the whole time, which is really interesting because this is a, a, a public um, uh, institution, the, the hospital that I go to. So, and, um, so every week, uh, every appointment we go and we learn about, you know, domestic violence, breastfeeding, newborn babies. We learn about diseases and just things you should and shouldn't do as a, you know, as a new parent. We learn about contractions and how they feel and what happens to your body, what to expect when your water breaks. Like we learn so much and like we even learned that a baby can poop <laughs> and when your water breaks, it comes out 
poop comes out. Um, and we learn what to look for when our water breaks and just so many things um, that I've really been um, enjoying this. That's one thing I didn't know that um, you don't meet your doctor until later. And I don't remember that back in the day. I just remember my mom going to the, seeing her doctor back in the day, like every appointment. But I guess this is a new thing. But um, like I said, I live in a smaller town, so maybe they do things differently. But I know the hospital I'm going to be delivering in, their um, obstetrics unit is known to be very good. So I'm very happy about that because I was going to, you know, do some research, find like a fantastic doctor. I had it picked out and everything. And um, it was since I live in a smaller town. It's like 45 minutes away, so I'm just like, what if my water breaks? And I don't make it 45 minutes, <laughs> you know, away. So, um, And then, like, every appointment, I would, have to drive, I would have to drive 45 minutes. So I wasn't too happy about that either. So I was like, you know what, let me find a local doctor. I uh, already go to that um, for my gynecologist. So I was like, let me just go ahead and, um, you know, go for my OB or other uh, daycare. So I'm not going to put my child in daycare um, because my husband will be getting out of the military. So he will be um, pretty much a stay at home dad. I'm sure he loves that. Um, so I'm not going to put my child in daycare, but um, I know people have, you know, say, you know, sign your kid up for the CDCs. Um, so and they're going to be on a waiting list for months, you know, just like base housing. Um, some people like it. Some people like the CDC. Um, some people don't. Um, in this area, um, people prefer to go to a civilian daycare um, because it's cheaper and there's less problems. So I don't. I don't know. Um, you definitely have to uh, see your local CDC. But if you don't have a choice, hey, you just gotta do what you gotta do. So I definitely would suggest signing up early. Um, for daycare before your child is born and that's what everyone has told me to do but they don't know that my husband is staying at home um it's gonna be a stay at home dad so i'm blessed on that go so back more into because i didn't really i touched on a little bit of how i was feeling um while you know while i'm pregnant so um first trimester was nause nause nauseous second trimester got really better um Second trimester, you know, it's pretty good. I'll get nauseous every now and then, but nothing crazy. Third trimester, it's more of um, me f physically feeling him kick. Like, he kicks so much. Like, it's crazy. Um, and I do have, like, lower back pain. Um, that's really about it. He's not really a difficult baby, um, which I've been very blessed. He's, he's pretty good, but he does kick now. He kicks, like, disrespectfully. <laughs> He kicks a lot um and throughout the middle of the night i will say he does he does wake me up in the middle of the night so especially um to go pee but you know when you're pregnant your mouth is always dry and dehydrated so you definitely have to drink water which i need to get better at um but i wake up in the middle of the night like pretty often lately my third trimester oh yeah like multiple times every hour on an hour i'm waking up I'm waking up at three four and then I have to get up for work at like 7.15, 7 o'clock. So <sighs> that's been rough. But um, I didn't wake up as much in my first and second tri trimester. I slept a lot. But now <laughs> I wake up. Um, but I can, you know, feel him moving, which is great, which is a blessing to be able to always feel your baby. My husband and I, we did plan our pregnancy. Um, and we both thought it was the right time to do so. Um, but, you know, with some of the benefits and the time, the amount of time that you get off is really good compared to other companies. You know, you only get six weeks off or, you know, you don't get enough time with your child. And um, I'm really grateful that I'm able to spend, you know, this amount of time um, off with my baby. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm seven. I actually hit 29 weeks today. Um, seven months, seven months in a week um and i'm due may 25th right now it is uh march 9th so i have a couple more months to go um i'll definitely um 
document more and I'll uh right now I'm in his room this is I have a bed right here but I'm um, waiting on his crib we we still have quite a few things to um put together but um and I'll definitely have to show you guys what I um pack in my hospital bag um but yeah so if you have any questions um feel free to you know comment or you can um, message me on Instagram at Cosmetic Bell Brave. Um, I I mainly have a, a lot of beauty content, but um, I definitely want to document my motherhood um, journey. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped you. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'll definitely um, update once I have the baby and just let you know if I learn anything else new. Um, but yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Enjoy the family. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.